Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the final part to Coup d'etat, the Mistral boss fight. So, biggest crime of this entire encounter is that they decided to have these minions that constantly spawn when you kill them, chase you through the entire engagement. And the thing that sucks the most about them is not only will they grab you and stun you and, you know, leave you open to being one-shotted and two-shotted, but they can attack and they do a lot of damage. And uh, when I was playing this on, on New Game, the boss one-shot me with everything and the little bastards two-shot me. So, you know, it was not fun at all. And I was on this for a long time before I decided to quit because I would have never got the guy recorded if I'd have continued what I was doing. But now we're back with a lot more strength. Uh, my technique is simple, I avoid her until she comes at me, then I counter, and then I go in for the kill. If you're using the, the Le Antranger, or whatever it's called, uh, the, the staff that she gives you, that you get from killing the boss, it's really good at crowd control, it's really good at damaging the boss and damaging the enemies around you. And the cool thing about the, the little handy wankers is they drop life when they die, so if you kill a bunch of them, you can get your life back. Uh, this attack here is very difficult to dodge sometimes when she, she changes pattern sporadically and, and catches you off guard. It does do massive damage as well. I think one to two hits of that and you're dead. So you, you really can't afford to mess around with it. The cool thing about this fight though is there's, there's three stages to it and each stage is checkpointed. And I think that's brilliant. Unfortunately, this is the only fight that does that in the game. Which I really don't understand. Especially for Monsoon. Monsoon is, is, is 10 minutes of just bullshit thanks to the fact he, he throws the entire military at you and it's very obnoxious. But when she jumps away, she's either going to taunt you and blow up and do nothing or she'll start throwing the, the handy wankers at you. So just run and evade them. I'm sure you can probably parry them, but I wouldn't try unless you, you've really got your timings down. This sequence here, if you cut this, as soon as it goes into that, you'll get the advantage on the transition rather than her knocking you across. I don't know if it has any effect on the battle, life-wise or anything, but after the checkpoint here, if you die, you will come back with full life, so I now have full life after that last engagement. And this sequence can be pretty challenging. Uh, you'll notice I've gone into Ripper mode because I want to deal as much damage as I can against the boss before these little assholes pin me in. Because for some reason, we've knocked her across to this pipe, 100 yards away, and those little bastards have still found us. And what they'll do is they pin you, and you clip on them, and the only way to get past them is to jump. And they'll jump on you, they'll attack you, like you just did then. I can't describe how annoying these little things are. The, oh. Shame on Platinum for doing it, because it's cheap, and they know it's cheap. It's intentionally put in there to, to be awkward. And I don't like it, and it's a shame, because there's a lot of boss fights in this game that are perfectly fair. This one is perfectly fair when it's just you and her. As soon as those little dudes turn up, it, it's just unnecessary, because they steal your lock on, they get in the way, they can't swim. It's just, oh, don't like them. But there's our third checkpoint. This is the final phase. That right there is the stinger move in this game, where you double tap forward and Y when you purchase it. Very good for covering distance and surprise damaging bosses. This phase is very similar to the last phase, it's just now she's going to use her, her staff as a whip and do ground attacks and things like that. That right there, did you notice how when I damaged her, she runs around to pick up the little guys and throw them at you? If you can parry that move, you will do some serious damage to her. It's really, really useful for, for doing quick damage. And this is it, pretty much. She's going to come back down, we need to parry her. Because she's going to do a slow attack, which it wants you to parry. Here it comes. I'll oh, press YB, sorry. And then the rest of this is is just cutscenes, and you get an opportunity to Simon Phoenix her, and then chop her up to your own desire. But that is the first of the bosses of the Winds of Destruction. She's not too bad when you come with upgrades, but when you don't have upgrades, God, she's a nightmare. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and you take care now.